Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Aulasis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Croatian, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Sinhalese, Spanish, and Thai. Alegres, saludos, encantadores televidentes. Mi nombre es Silvio, desde Ciudad del Este, en el maravilloso Paraguay. Paraguay, en lengua indígena, significa río que pertenece al mar, sus verdes colinas onduladas, sus ricos suelos y sus exuberantes bosques pristinos. Impresionaron tanto a los primeros exploradores que lo llamaron un segundo Edén. Durante mil años, las espectaculares cataratas del Iguazú, declaradas Patrimonio de la Humanidad, por la Organización de las Naciones Unidas para la, la Educación, la Ciencia y la Cultura, UNESCO, junto con numerosos grandes ríos, lagos, cristalinos y exuberantes humedales, han alimentado una notable civilización con un rico patrimonio artístico. Paraguay también comparte el segundo acuífero de agua dulce más grande del mundo, el acuífero guaraní, con tres países vecinos. Los paraguayos manifiestan un amplio espectro de relaciones armoniosas entre el hombre y el agua, y el hombre y la naturaleza. Las abundantes bendiciones de la naturaleza han ayudado a los paraguayos a perfeccionar el arte de la hospitalidad. Es un placer compartir con ustedes un breve vislumbre de la belleza única de Paraguay. Nuestra gente está agradecida con Dios quien creó compañeros amorosos como ustedes. Durante más de tres décadas, la Maestra Suprema Jin Hai ha iluminado nuestro mundo con sus enseñanzas divinas. Una maestra totalmente iluminada imparte el método Quan Yin de meditación a aquellos que desean descubrir inmediatamente la naturaleza de Dios interna y alcanzar en una vida la liberación eterna del ciclo de la transmigración. El método Quan Yin ha sido practicado por todos los maestros iluminados tales como Buda, Jesucristo, el profeta Mahoma, la paz sea con él, y Guru Nanak. Ella enfatiza que si siempre recordamos a Dios, ofrecemos servicio desinteresado a otros y seguimos las leyes del universo, alcanzaremos nuestro potencial más elevado como humano y comprenderemos verdaderamente nuestro propósito en la tierra. La Maestra Suprema Jin Hai es un extraordinario ejemplo viviente de compasión. 
enviando frecuentemente asistencia material y financiera, además de amor a los refugiados, a los desamparados, a las víctimas de desastres naturales y a otros que necesitan ayuda. En el 2006, ella recibió el premio Busi de la Paz, considerado el premio Nobel de la Paz de Oriente y ha sido honrada a través de los años con otros numerosos premios y galardones por sus excepcionales obras filantrópicas y humanitarias. Una verdadera voz para nuestros preciosos amigos animales. Ella promueve la pacífica y amorosa dieta a base de plantas y prevé con el despertar de la humanidad hacia lo sagrado de todas las vidas, un tranquilo y glorioso mundo completamente vegano, donde los animales y las personas vivan en dichosa armonía. Sus iniciativas para difundir la tendencia vegana son diversas y han incluido la distribución del volante de vida alternativa, la cadena internacional de restaurante veganos, Loving Hut, Supreme Master Television, además de hablar regularmente con influyentes líderes de gobierno y medios de comunicación y participar en conferencia televisada sobre el cambio climático, tanto si somos conscientes de ello como si no. Sus esfuerzos han tenido una enorme influencia sobre la conciencia mundial del estilo de vida amigable con los animales y de cómo esta benévola forma de ser puede traer paz duradera entre las naciones a la vez que salvamos nuestro planeta al cambio climático. A lo largo de los años, la Maestra Suprema Chinhai ha viajado por todo el mundo, desde las Américas hasta África, desde Europa hasta Oceanía, y ha ofrecido cientos de discursos al público y a sus discípulos sobre una variedad de temas espirituales. Hoy somos bendecidos con la presentación de una de estas reveladoras conferencias titulada Salvemos nuestro planeta, elimina la producción de carne, extractos de charlas de la Maestra Suprema Chin Hai, parte 2 de 3, en Entre la Maestra y los discípulos dada en inglés. First of all, and foremost of all, we should use government system to encourage new projects, like new level of citizen cooperation. Namely, we must let people know it's urgent now and it's time to stop global crisis. Time is short and we must all act as one to save our world from disappearing, and to save our lives and all the lives on the planet. Everything else takes too long. I have told everybody many times, technology takes too long. Even if it helps, it takes so long. So the fastest and easiest way is to stop animal products and to stop consumption of it. Then we will have more time to develop better technology and scientific advancements. If we stop livestock rising and cruel practice on human and animals, the result will be miracle. The result will be almost immediately, within few weeks. If everybody stop eating meat right now, a week's time, the weather will change into a benevolent one immediately changing. Everything that has been damaged will be returned to normal in eight weeks' time. If everybody on the planet stop eating meat and turn into compassionate heart, then the result will be immediately. It's just like we want to go south. 
but we are heading north. So the only way to see the south is to turn to the opposite direction and head south. So the way we are doing right now, we are killing animals, killing humans, it's not benevolent. It's not respecting lives. It's wrong. So if we want the opposite effect for ourselves, for our life, we have to do the opposite. That is very simple and logical. And everyone understands that. Thank you so much. In September 2008, Dr. Rajendra Panchori, head of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, he's the one who got Nobel Peace Prize together with uh, Vice President Al Gore eh, and others. He stated that scientists had called to tell him, I called to tell him that the emissions from livestock were much higher than previously estimated. You see, before they say it was 18%. In the livestock long shadow report 2006, but now the emission from animal farming are actually higher than that. As far as uh, how much higher, they are not still very sure. But Dr. Colin Campbell, the best seller of nutritional biochemist book, he said that his colleagues found that 50% plus of total greenhouse gas emissions right now are coming from livestock raising. And that is not even uh, the sure uh, percentage yet, you see? And Dr. Campbell revealed that uh, this information is not yet the highest that they have estimated, that they have researched. They think it would be more, okay? And he has revealed this information to us in an interview with the Supreme Master Television. Uh, right now, the climate scientists are telling us more and more that if we reduce uh, livestock industry, we reduce methane. And that is the most immediate way to cool the planet because uh, CO2 from uh, fossil fuel may take tens of thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, you see, to leave the atmosphere and cool the planet according to the research. But methane is 23 times more potent, hotter than CO2, and they uh, dissipate uh, average uh, over 10 years or 20 years. So the report from uh, IPCC scientist Dr. Kirk Smith in USA said that uh, methane is a much hotter gas than currently reported, yes. He say that it could be 60 to 100 times hotter than CO2, average over 20 years. So methane goes out in the atmosphere in 9 to 15 years, disappear, compared to up to thousands of years for CO2. So if methane is reduced, the warming will be reduced immediately. You understand the logic, yes? Because CO2 stay longer in the atmosphere, but methane go and disappear quick. So the way we reduce the methane is by reducing animal agriculture. If we ban meat, ban livestock raising, then the methane gas will be cut, you know, for up to day at least 50%. Can you imagine? It's very big chunk. And then the planet will be cool immediately. Compared to CO2, it takes 10,000 of years to cool off. Right now, the most problem gas that hit the planet is methane. You see, because it's a lot of them. According to the scientists, it's already 50%. That they say more than 50% even, you see. So if we stop methane, meaning stop the animal rising, then we stop 50%. They say just 50%, at least 50%. Oil is not the worst. So, although we don't want oil to continue, we can have oil even. We can have oil if that helps the Mexican to become more prosperous and self-dependent, self-sustained.
because oil is not the worst thing. Oil is not the only thing, and it's not the worst thing that damage our planet. It is the livestock industry. It's the, actually the most polluting, the most disease-producing, the most energy-consuming, and the most greenhouse gas-emitting industries that exist. The United Nations report called Livestock Long Shadow states that the farm animal industry emits more greenhouse gases than all the transportation on Earth combined. And according to the Nobel Prize winning Dr. Rajendra Pachuri, chairman of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, who himself is a vegetarian, he said meat production is extremely carbon intensive. This is partly because of, of the pollution cycles, you know, including refrigeration, transportation, etc., not to mention destroying the forest for grazing land, for pasture to land and all the costs or the carbon emitting from disease causing and curing etc etc that's why i said just leave the meat alone and we have everything else even oil is fine even oil if we have it we can use it until we have something better for our planet but if we stop the animal raising stop animal product, then we cut a big percentage, 80% of pollution to our planet and stop 80% of global warming. So we can continue to have oil and cars. I know people will be surprised hearing me saying this, but no, it is true like that because we have not invented enough instrument for transportation and other uses. So we may continue to use the oil if we have it. Of course, the better if we don't use, but at the moment we must use it. And if we just leave all the meat animal production alone, then we can use anything. And Mexico can make use of this advantage of oil to uh, elevate the standard of living of the people. So what I say is, stop the meat production, which will bring great benefit to the environment of your country. Since Mexico is also involved in the livestock industry, there is also sustainable resource development as an alternative to oil as well, if we have it quick enough. You see, your country already has begun this with a large wind energy project uh, near the city of La Ventosas, which uh, I understand mean uh, the windy. Huh? <laughs> Sustainable energy in general is also showing itself to be very profitable and uh, job producing to people. So there can be both economic and environmental benefit from developing sustainable energy and the earth will be protected. But animals industry is the number one enemy of our survival. We could change in order to help solve the climate problem. Just leave one piece of meat and we have everything else as it is right now. And more later on, as the forest will regain its strength and grow back to lush for the situation again and then attract more rains and protect the soil and cool the planet. As I said already, CO2 will linger too long, up to 10,000 years in the atmosphere, but methane dissipate quickly. And the most factor that contribute to our global warming right now is methane. And methane come from livestock rising. Do you see my logic? Yes. Yes? yes? Okay, good. So if we cut the methane, the planet cool down quick. If we cut CO2 and still keep the methane, then it doesn't help much. Besides, we cannot cut CO2 that quick because we don't have other technology invention right now to replace the one that we are having. How many electric cars you see running on your United States street yet? How many? Maybe one, two, three. Huh? How much CO2 does it cut? Not much. But the methane pollution came from livestock raising. So if we stop that, no more heating. 
no more heating of the planet. Because if we stop livestock raising, that means stop also forest uh, clearance. It's because most of forest clearance is for planting stuff for animals. So we water the plant from the root is the best. <laughs> If we cut meat diet, everything else cut. No more transportation for meat, no more deep freeze for meat, no more manure run off into our rivers and contaminate our river. And because of that, we have to use more chemical to clean it. So we just uh, give more and more chemical into our body. And then if no more meat and no more forest clearing, then we don't even need to plant trees that much. The forest will recover itself as uh, we have seen in some area. Just leave it alone, nature will take care, truly. All we do is just work with nature, and nature will take care of everything. God doesn't put us on this planet to die. God provides everything already. It's just we overspend. We do not heed the advice of the Bible. In the Bible, God say, I made all the herbs in the field, plants that bear fruit. That shall be your food. I made also the plants for the animals that shall be their food. God never say, I made animal for you to eat. It's so clear. I wonder why nobody saw it. God even say, do not kill all the she goat and the he bullock to make offering to me because your hands are full of innocent blood. Repent to yourself. Do not kill any more innocent lives. Otherwise, if you pray, I turn my head away from you. No? Are there such things in the Bible? Yes, yes, it's in the Bible. Reverend, tell me. I'm not making it up. I think it was, I think it was Isaiah. Absolutely, you've quoted it absolutely. It, uh, the rabbi just told us it was Isaiah. Wow, he knows it by heart. <laughs> but I know it's there because I read it when I was young. I was a kid. I read the Bibles. I sleep with it. I don't probably uh, remember as much as the Reverend does, but uh, I do know. I do know that God do not tell us to eat meat. He say, meat for the belly, belly for the meat. God shall destroy both meat and them. Do not be among meat eater and alcohol drinkers. Not to be among them even, not to talk about being one ourselves. So in all kinds of direction, religious, scientific, and health, meat is a no-no. So from now on, we have to realize that. And please tell everybody else. I know you know it already. Please just don't be uh, just uh, a vegetarian. Be a heroic <laughs> vegetarian. Be out there. Tell people. Do something. I need your help. Thank you. The only way to avoid the point of no return climate catastrophe is to take action on the most climatically disastrous course of all, that is meat production. By now, we have all the evidence, all the information to safely say so. The livestock industry is the top greenhouse gas generator, the last published findings from the United Nations in 2006 told us that the livestock industry causes greenhouse gas emissions more than all the world's transportation sectors combined. Airplane, train, cars, motorcycles, etc. all together. Updated calculations tell us that the livestock industry is responsible for at least 50% of the global warming. There are three reasons why the livestock industry is the first cause of global warming that we should focus on. First, livestock is the primary human caused emitter of methane. And methane not only has 72 times the heat trapping ability, it is a shorter lived gas. This means that it will leave the atmosphere much faster than CO2 within just a decade, as opposed to thousands of years in need for CO2. Therefore, eliminating methane by eliminating livestock breeding 
is the fastest way to cool the planet. Yeah, we have to tackle the most important of uh, emitters. Eh? Next, the pollutant known as uh, aerosols, you already know, or particles released along with CO2 from burning fossil fuels actually have a cooling effect. Some scientists say it is roughly cancelling out the warming effect of CO2. Therefore, much of the warming we are seeing may actually be due to methane. In fact, it is due to methane and its number one source, that is animal raising. Third, NASA scientists are paying increasing attention to another very serious source of global warming, that is black carbon. I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. This is the particulate matter known as soot, uh, S-O-O-T, and it is 680 times more heat trapping than CO2. So black carbon is landing on the ice in Antarctica, absorbing the sun's heat and accelerating the ice melt. The majority of the black carbon particles in Antarctica are coming from where? South American rainforests that are burned for the livestock industry. Now, we're going somewhere. We must urgently address methane and black carbon, both outcomes of the meat industry. Immediately, we have to tackle it. I pray all wise leaders will halt the little meat practice, which is the main force driving us to the point of no return right now. Otherwise, all other efforts to decarbonize our economies may be canceled out or never have a chance to materialize in the first place. Is this latest news about NASA discovery of methane related to the Mars people, people living underground? Could be, could be, yes. You know, uh, because they have to pump their toxic gases from their activities uh, from underground to the surface of Mars so that they can detox and purify uh, the air that they breathe. Yeah. Thank you, Master. Next question. Uh, since how long have Martians been living underground? Since after the mass destruction on Mars, they have begun to live underground ever since then. I see. Yeah. Thank you. And the Martians currently living underground, are they aware of what had happened in their planet history? They have been told. They pass on the knowledge of what happened of their planet to their children and grandchildren. Even though it's 40 million years ago, uh, they retain the history of what happened so that the descendants know how to take care of what they have and not to be careless and not to be so destructive anymore, but more virtue and, you know, spiritual. Uh, they must live like that. Okay? Yes. And Master, uh, during the, the destruction of the planet, how did they die? Oh, terrible. Let me check. Uh, the mass extinction came, they die, not only human beings and there, but the animals also, they die by two main poisonous gases, uh, namely hydrogen sulfide and nitrous oxide, plus methane as the third course. But hydrogen sulfide and methane from the livestock began to warm the climate and then trigger uh, more other gases from the ocean, from permafrost and glacier around the planet, just like what's happening to our planet right now. Let me see if anything else I need to... Okay, I check, okay, one moment. I'm checking if anything else. They die, you know, agonizing death, you know, not like quick death, but slow. It takes men and animals 
around four days to die a very painful and suffocating slow death. As the destruction happened too fast, no one can help anyone. 90% of the populations, including animals, they die. And then sometimes later, another 5% also die. And then uh, a while later, 3.8% also die. Only 0.2% of them escape, you know, around 2 million, into the underground caves. And then they dig deeper, longer, and they live next to the underground river, and that's how they survive. Scientists reported that billions of years ago, Venus could have had oceans like Earth, but they dried up partly because Venus was so close to the sun. Still, the presence of water um, could have mean that there was physical life there, and scientists um, believe today that there is microbial life. Was Venus mm. ever like Earth, sustaining life? Yes, yes, it was, yes. It was once a beautiful planet, and uh, now it's no more, there's no life up there at all. Not life as we know of, yeah? yeah. Uh, it's a pity, no? Thank yeah. you, Master. Mars is known today as the red planet and Venus is boiling hot. Did Venus yes. ever um, have a landscape similar to Earth with thriving life and green hills, blue seas, or did it have a different landscape? Yes, yes, they have similar. Our neighboring planet, like Venus, Mars, yeah, have similar landscape. Some are more strikingly exquisite, more beautiful. Hi, Master. Hi. How technologically advanced were the Venusians before the mass destruction? Ah, very advanced. Much more than us. Uh, sadly, only technology advancement. Yeah, not much else, and that's why. You see, they have been a little bit too materialistic, huh? They have been very proud of their own achievements and pay very little attention to the divine nature of the inner kingdom. Hmm? They were too proud. They had too much uh, advantages from technology, and they think they are God. Yes, they thought they could do anything they want. In fact, almost physically. Thank you, Master. Welcome. Master, did the Venus yeah. inhabitants have a solution like being vegan before the mass extinction? No, no. No. They know nothing about vegan, about compassion, about uh, the interconnectedness between lives. And that's why they faced such a terrible end. Hmm? Worse than Mars. And what kind of disaster occurred on Venus? Explosive and poisonous gases from livestock as well, and that in turn trigger other gases, yeah, from all sides. And then they just explode within a few weeks, like eight or nine weeks. Everything was completely destroyed, and they are annihilated because of the big explosion from under the earth, from like a volcanic type and gas from the ocean, and of course from the uh, animal. They all together exploded the whole planet, the whole population died because of explosive and poisonous gases. Thank you, Master. Oh, you are welcome. It's sad. Dotados televidentes, gracias por acompañarnos al programa de hoy titulado Salvemos Nuestro Planeta. Elimina la producción de carne. Extractos de charlas de la Maestra Suprema Jin Hai, parte 2 de 3. 
en, entre la maestra y los discípulos. Sigan sintonizados a Supreme Master Television para una programación más positiva. A continuación sigue de la Sagrada Escritura del Hinduismo, cantando por la felicidad, la paz y la prosperidad en palabra de sabiduría. Que el Todopoderoso guíe sus pasos hacia todas las buenas nuevas. May the Almighty guide your steps to all good tidings. For more details, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash bnd.